What's up guys, Andrew here on my channel Geared Inc, where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you. And on my channel, that's PC Tech, Games, and Gear. And it's like 2 a.m., so it's time to make a video, right? Because that's normally when I do it. And so, as far as making this video, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, picking out a monitor, especially if you're a gamer, what you need to know. I'm not really going to say which monitors to pick, because a lot of that is personal preference. I'm just going to be talking about kind of what you need to know when you are picking a gaming monitor, so that way you're basically buying the monitor that fits you. So let's talk about really first off three type of monitors that are out there when you're talking about gaming monitors. So the first one is called TN or Twisted Pneumatic. This is by far the most common. Now typically the color production on this out of the box is not going to be the best, but it is the cheapest to manufacture and it easily supports high refresh rates. So this is the one you see out there most commonly along with low response times. So it's a very commonly used panel, um, especially for FPS gamers. Now, the middle child is one called VA or Vertical Alignment. This combines a couple of different elements from the next type of panel which is called IPS and TN in that it does support higher refresh rates more easily than an IPS panel does, but it does that at the compromise of some color quality and other things. And so it's not really widely used, but it is out there as well. And then the kind of top end one are IPS. These are monitors that are often used by photo editing professionals and video editing professionals where color, um, basically clarity and accuracy is extremely important. These are typically the most vibrant in terms of uh, overall color for uh, monitors and in terms of uh, viewing angles because on a TN panel, if you start to turn it to the side, if you're not looking dead on at it, you'll start to get screen blur, color blur, and then eventually you get kind of that green um, afterglow effect. And then with IPS, you can turn it any direction you want, and really it's going to look the same from any angle, which is one of the advantages that it has. And, uh, you know, obviously along with, again, the better color quality. So that is the first thing you need to decide is what type of panel you want to go for. Um, there's not really a right answer. I will say that I have both TN and IPS panels. The one behind me right here is an IPS. This one's a TN. I prefer IPS. Once you have it, even with proper color calibration, like at a TN panel, you start to notice the difference. And so um, if you can get your hands on it, it is more expensive, but that's the one that I personally use. Now, as far as with kind of deciding what monitor features and what you want, first thing you have to decide is what FPS do you want to game at and at what resolution. So this can get a little more complicated because let's say I have a 1060 GTX, like the one I'm giving away right now, and you want to game at like maybe 144 hertz. Well, typically the GTX um, 1060 will be able to do about 60 FPS on most AAA titles at 1080p on ultra high settings. So if you don't want to compromise your settings, but you want to get higher FPS, it might not even be able to push it at 1080p. You may have to go up to a 1070. But what if you want to get 144 hertz at uh, 1080p? Or what if you want to get 144 hertz at 1440p? Well, then you're going to have to buy a higher end graphics card that's able to support that if you don't want to compromise on your settings. So these are things you have to look into depending on the type of games you play. And basically, if you're willing to sacrifice on certain things like graphical settings, etc. So you need to figure out kind of that first. What resolution and what FPS? Once you know that, then you can then start looking at all the different panels out there um, and then you have to decide if you are willing to give up things like response time a lot of fps players are not and so you want to look for very very low response time monitors if you're like a csgo player versus you might be able to willing to compromise and uh, settle for something that's a little bit slower on input um, if it's not that important to you and then you do also need to decide if you want g-sync or free sync essentially what these features provide is an integration of the frame rates to the GPU so you don't get what's called screen tearing, which is pretty horrendous. It's essentially when you literally, it's exactly what it sounds like, um, where basically the rendered image is appearing to get torn in half. Um, it's one of those features, guys, that again, once you have it, it's really hard not to have it. Um, the monitor that I use most for gaming behind me is a 1440p, 165 hertz IPS G-Sync monster, the Acer Predator. I love it to death, but it was rather expensive. Uh, luckily, I got it at a great deal at the time, but it's still an expensive monitor, um, you know, in the hundreds of dollars. And so it's one of those things, again, where if you have the extra money, the monitor is going to provide you with a very, very um, drastic increase in your gaming experience if you've never had it before. And so the last thing that you want to look at when you're buying a monitor outside of reviews, guys, is just taking a look at the size of the monitor. So. Rule of thumb is this, 
if you're gaming at 4K, let's start there. 32 inches seems to be kind of the general rule of thumb for like the perfect fit due to how um, big basically everything else on the screen. The monitor to this side of me and my right or left depending on the camera, this is a 4K panel. It's 60 hertz, it's TN, and honestly it's only 27 inches, but I actually prefer that. For me, I kind of like the ratio of um, basically how everything lines up. For if you are going to be buying a monitor, don't settle for anything under 23 inches. The reason I say that is because as you continue to game, um, and different aspect ratios are kind of being implemented in terms of just like gaming moving forward, there's really only one aspect ratio right now. But you, more monitor is better. It's always better up to a point. Anything above a 32 inch monitor, you might as well buy a TV, but that's a whole different topic because honestly there's not really like there's not a good gaming TV yet for for computers, which is why people just don't buy them. And so as far as just if you're picking out the size, 23 is kind of what the minimum I would go for. 27 inches is really a sweet spot because once you have that real estate, guys, it's nice. It's really nice just to have the room to move around or edit or do whatever, what, you know, gaming, whatever you want to do. Again, once you have it, it's hard to go back. So I hope these tips have helped you guys in terms of what to look at for when you're trying to buy a gaming monitor. If you like this video, leave me a big thumbs up. If you need, go ahead and leave me a thumbs down. Like I always say, guys, if you have your own suggestions, leave them down below for people who are looking at these videos. I'm trying to get an idea of what they should do for themselves. And if you haven't already entered the giveaways that I have going on, they'll be in the description below. And uh, I hope to see you next time here on Gear Dink.